Welcome to Cook 30. I'm Jeremy Dixon from the Revive Cafes in Auckland, New Zealand, and also wrote the Revive Cafe cookbooks. And today, I want to share with you some secrets from my cafe so you can make delicious, healthy meals in your very own home. Cook 30 Food is about using great, whole food, plant-based ingredients. We're going to be using protein sources like beans, nuts, and lentils, whole grains, fresh fruit and vegetables, and tying it all together with herbs and spices and international flavours. And the best part about Cook 30 Food is you do not have to spend hours slaving away in the kitchen making it. I'm going to show you a great, delicious, healthy meal in the next 30 minutes, and you'll be amazed how easy it is. On the menu today we have a McHealthy meal combo. We're starting with an amazing burger that has a bean patty, Moroccan hummus, fresh salad vegetables, and roasted butternut squash. On the side, we're gonna have sweet potato fries and finishing it off with a carob ice shake. So to start, we've gotta make sure we set up our kitchen properly. A nice clear work surface. We've got a pan on the stove. The oven's preheated at 350 Fahrenheit, 180 Celsius. Sharp knife, good chopping board, and we've got lots of healthy ingredients in our cupboard and refrigerator. So we're going to start with the sweet potato fries, and these will be nothing like anything you've tasted before. So we're going to start with some sweet potatoes, and you can choose any colour you want. You can have the, the purple, the red, the orange, the gold, and we're not going to peel them at all. I'm not a big fan of peeling vegetables if we don't need to, because obviously it takes time, it creates wastage, and there's actually lots of um, nutrients in the skin as well. So to, to make fries, we're just going to chop this into nice, thick circles. And then we're just going to line them up together. You can probably do about three at a time if you're skillful. And just cutting them, whoops, we we'll might just do two, not feeling that skillful today. Cut two, just like that, and you get a really nice fry type size, so nice chunky fries. So I'll continue with the rest of them. So when you get um, fries from a fast food place, they're generally deep fried in oil, which means they're, you've got huge amounts of fat, and the fat's been usually not very good fats as well. So just chop these up, just keep cutting them into nice fry size pieces. They will reduce a little bit when they're cooking, so you probably want to err on the bigger side than the smaller side. And if you've got a long way or a short way, make sure you go the long way, because you want longer fries rather than shorter fries. Now one of the best parts about these fries is going to be a lot lower fat than the ones you get in a fast food place. I'm going to add some oil, probably about two tablespoons of oil. So this is actually a very small amount compared to what you'd be using if you were in a, in a fast food restaurant deep frying. So just toss them up like this, just so they're evenly coated. It's really important that it's evenly distributed so they, they cook and don't burn. Oil helps things cook faster, evenly, and obviously adds lots of flavour. An oven tray, like that. Spread them out. Don't have to be perfectly spread out and pop them in the oven. So they're underway and they'll be ready in probably around about 15 to 20 minutes. Next ingredient is the roasted butternut squash. And this is an amazing vegetable when it's cooked and is an amazing ingredient for a burger. Now with the butternut squash, you've got this area here which is all butternut, and this area here which is, which is butternut and seeds. So because we're quick, we're just going to use the top section, and we're just going to slice off, we're just going to slice off four rings of butternut squash, and these are, happen to be 
burger shaped sizes. So they're going to be really nice. Um, the skin on this is really, really soft, so you leave it on. We don't need to peel it. Just put a, just a touch of oil on another oven tray, baking tray. Both sides, just a very light coating. These are my favorite oven trays. They're really inexpensive, go in the dishwasher, and they're just very, very handy and versatile. And they're non-stick as well. So we're going to put those in the oven as well. And there we have two jobs immediately underway, the two, two long cooking jobs, and now we can get on with the rest of the meal. Now the great secret to a great burger is a great patty. So I'm going to show you a really nice, delicious patty that you can make that's really, really quick. So I'm using beans. I'm going to use some frozen soybeans. Um, you could use frozen broad beans, fava beans, or any other kind of similar bean. And we're going to use a can of white beans, and I've got some cannellini beans, but any kind of whitish bean will do. This recipe is not that fussy. So I'll open the canned beans and drain them. And beans are a great source of protein. So you want to have a bit of protein at generally most meals, or every meal. And we're just going to put everything into the food processor. So one can of beans. And a bag of these. So this is 10 ounces, or about 280 grams. Something like that. Beautiful colour. And these are actually kind of raw, but they're actually fine. They're, they're still they're frozen when they're fresh. So you get a really nice fresh flavour in the burger. Okay, now we want to add some flavour, fennel seeds. So we're going to put about a teaspoon of fennel seeds in, and they just have just lovely, you just bite in and just get these little bursts of really nice flavour. Tablespoon of coriander, dried. Going to add a tablespoon of sweet chilli sauce. And yeah, some cilantro or coriander. So we're going to actually use the stalks because um, so chop off the end bits and just chop, roughly chop the stalks like that. And we're going to reserve that for garnish later for something. There we go. Fits everything in there. Oh, we need a bit of flour. So I've got some besan flour here, or also called chickpea or chana flour. Um, you can also use um, whole wheat flour or rice flour, but just, just a bit of flour just to help bind everything together. Just a good tablespoon. So what we have to do now is put the lid on and blend. I'll process. And watch that going around. Blending up nicely. So we've got a pan on the, on the stove here, just checking it's nice and hot. So when you put your hand over it, you kind of want it to be, you can just kind of keep your hand above it and it's really, really warm. Um, so that's kind of the, the best way to have a pan. Look at that, I think that's ready. As you can see, the, the lovely burger is, or the mix has been mixed really well. I'll take the blade out. And we're just going to put this in here and make little burger patties. So, splash of oil. Use a good non stick frying pan. You only just need a splash of oil. And we're just going to use our hands and just form these burgers. So, you want them probably around about, you know, double golf ball size. So make them together, form them around like that, and just put them in the pan. And you know the pan's right when you can put it in, and it's just a, a nice sizzle. You don't want oil splattering everywhere. As you can see, the beans haven't been totally blended, and that's totally fine. Um, you want a bit of texture in there. You don't want it just be, to be totally mushy. You just want to make sure there's some nice taste in there. Another, another one. So we're doing around about servings for about four people today. Just um, put that in there. And just know all these flavours with the cilantro, the coriander, the fennel seeds, that these are going to taste really nice. Just wash my hands. Move the oil around. We're just going to leave them just happily sit there. They're probably going to take about five minutes, minutes aside to cook through, um, and we'll come back to those later. We've made a fantastic start on this McHealthy meal. We've got the butternut in the oven, 
the Coomera fries are in the oven, or the sweet potato fries, and the burger patties are off and racing in the pan. So we're gonna make the hummus now, the Moroccan hummus. So we're gonna start with a red onion, whoops. And we're just gonna cut the ends off, put it into half. And we're just gonna gently, we're gonna fry this up and caramelize it and add it to the hummus whole. Normally you might add something like this to a, a dip and blend it in, but it's really nice having these beautiful, sweet strands of red onion running through a hummus or a dip, especially in a burger. So just slice them as thinly as you can. And again, when you're slicing, we're slicing through the, through the onion. And you want to make sure you've got a really nice sharp knife. Oop, cut that one last. And I put this in a little pan. Now these little pans here are really inexpensive and really awesome when you want to just get something cooking um, really quickly with little hassle. It doesn't take much room on the stove and you can put them straight in the dishwasher. So I put that on there and they also heat up very, very fast. So we're gonna put just a touch of oil just to get it underway. And we're gonna put this onion in here. And we're gonna let that just slowly caramelize and in about five or six minutes that'll be beautiful and thin and juicy and sweet. And we can add that to the hummus that we are about to make now. So grab your blender, we you can use a stick blender if you want. So just gonna make a reasonably standard hummus recipe. And the first ingredient is garbanzo beans or chickpeas, depending what country you come from, all the same thing. Um, canned is obviously the most convenient way of getting them, but they're also, um, I generally at home will cook them up, cook a big batch up, store them in plastic containers, put them in the freezer, and you've got fresh chickpeas available whenever you want. So one can, or around about two cups. Lemon juice is an essential ingredient for hummus. So you want the juice, around about four tablespoons, which is usually around about two lemons. And this just gives it a lovely sharp note to the hummus. Pour it in through my fingers to catch the pips. I think I caught all of them. Look at that, this is, whoops, this is cracking away already. Um, tahini is an essential element for hummus and tahini is just ground up sesame seeds. Um, you can buy this at most supermarkets or um, health stores, so you want two tablespoons in there, two good tablespoons. Um, because it's Moroccan, we want to add a Moroccan flavour, so we're going to put a, a tablespoon of cumin powder. Mmm, you can smell that, beautiful. And we want to put about half a teaspoon of salt. And we'll need some water. So we'll get some water on hand. And every batch of hummus I make is different. So you've kind of got to taste it as well. So we'll start off with about half a cup of water. And also we're going to add some garlic. Can't forget garlic and hummus. So just um, probably two good cloves. Or we'll perhaps use these uh, one big and two little. Get just in the garlic press. Squeeze it straight through. And use some garlic. And then let's blend it up. Pretty good, look at that. Because we make it in a blender rather than a food processor, you have to make your hummus reasonably liquid, but that's okay. So that's pretty much the hummus ready to go. So we'll just leave that there, and as soon as those onions are finished, then we'll just mix that in with the hummus, and it'll become a really nice dip that we can use to put on our burger. If you've just joined us on Cook30, we are making a McHealthy meal combo. We've got an amazing burger with a delicious bean patty, Moroccan hummus, 
fresh salad vegetables and roasted butternut squash. On the side we have sweet potato fries and finishing off with delicious carob ice shake. Okay, we need to prepare the fresh vegetables for the burger. So we've got some nice big tomatoes, a beautiful cos or romaine lettuce, and a good avocado. So we'll just prepare these ahead of time. So we want four big slices of tomato. Making four burgers. We can use that for a salsa or something else later. And just nice big chunks of tomato. Look at that juicy dripping there. Nice homegrown tomatoes. And then with the, the lettuce, we want to just peel off some nice leaves. So perhaps we'll just start with these ones and we can break them in half later. So four nice leaves. And they'll fit nicely in the burger. One, two, and I'll perhaps throw this one here. No, nope, maybe this one here. Here's a good one. Just pick out four lovely leaves. Nice, crisp. That's my favorite lettuce, Romania or cost lettuce. And a burger needs avocado. So we'll chop this guy in half. Get rid of the stone with a knife. And we're just going to peel it off. Oh, how are those onions going? Better give them a bit of a toss around. They're going well. They're nearly ready to flip. So we want to just take the skin off here. And then slice them up. So part of this burger is just getting every, all the components ready so when we put the burger together, it can happen very quickly right at the end. So we're just going to slice any bad bits off and just slice the avocado like that. Oh, that's a bit of a bad bit. And then just slice it again like this. And put it on our platter ready to go. I've also got some nice hamburger buns. So I've found, finally found some wholemeal ones. It is very hard to find ho good wholemeal bread or burger buns. These are slightly tiny, but they'll do a really good job. So we've got four burger buns that we can use to put everything inside. So that's ready for the plate up. So we better get these burgers flipping. They're looking really good. Where's my flipper gone? Here it is. So I just want to gently grab these. I'll start with this one here. Lift it up and flip it over like that. Look at that. Staying together pretty well. Really gentle. These are quite delicate, but they're really delicious. Look at that, nice, nicely browned. There we go. So another couple of minutes and they'll start to harden up and they will be delicious. Okay, that's nice and caramelized. Look at that. So to mix, we're just going to basically put it in the, I think we'll put this in here, pour the hummus into a bowl. Get a good spatula. All these great Moroccan flavors in here. And we're just going to put this the onion inside and just mix it up. And it's a lovely kind of a dip sensation. So this is something you'd use in a burger rather than, you know, sour cream or, you know, all the, or instead of mayonnaise, just a nice thing that's going to give it a lot of moisture and make it delicious. So there we go. Burgers are underway. Okay, the butternut must be ready by now. See how that's going. Look at that. So we'll just pop that on there, just to look at that. Isn't that a lovely little ingredient to have in the middle of your burger? Beautiful and sweet. I might just put just a sprinkle of salt on it, just to, so we don't forget later. And the kuma fries, I think, should be ready as well. Or the sweet potato fries. Look at that. Wonderful, nice and soft, but still holding together. That's the, the trick with these, is getting them to the right place where they don't fall apart or they're too, um, they're too, too uncooked. So all we're gonna do is just, actually we'll better salt them there, is just salt them, just a, just a light sprinkle of salt over them like that. Not much at all. 
and we're just going to lightly, gently pop them into our serving bowl. I don't know if you've noticed, but I really love wooden serving bowls. So if you ever see any around, um, there's some great importer shops now that have beautiful bowls, and things present really well in wood. So if over the years you can slowly build up um, nice servery, it can really make your the meals good as well. A little bit soggy, it's soft, but that's okay. They still taste delicious. Just put them all in there. And these are just wonderfully delicious alternative to French fries. And if you don't know if you notice, but most of the French fries you buy in the um, supermarket to make at home are, have a lot of really horrible oils and fats and things in them as well. So that's pretty much done. I'll just put this back in the oven just to keep it out of the way. Um, brilliant, that's ready. I'll just get a bit of parsley to put on top. Here it is. And just to show you how I keep my herbs, um, this is parsley I've used, used yesterday, but if you keep it wrapped up in a nice um, wet paper towel, herbs keep beautifully. So you can keep reusing them and keep using them and they're, they're nice and fresh. So we're just going to give that a nice chop up. Oh, I think I'll just chop through the stalk there. Just a sprinkle of green on the top to make those look lovely. Okay, moving on. We better get these burgers happening. So I'm just going to present it on a nice wooden chopping board. So I'm just going to lay out these burgers like this. Get the bases there. So first ingredient, this is the fun part of the whole meal. All the preparation is done, all the hard work, and now you can just put together the burger. So grab a dollop of this lovely Moroccan hummus with some strands of that delicious caramelised onion. There we go. Looks awesome. Oh, that's probably a little bit too much. Don't want it overflowing out the side. That one can go in there. Um, next, we're going to put on the butternut. Like that. And now we're going to carefully put these bean burgers on top. Put the tomato on. Some avocado. Just spread it around like that. Just finish with a just fold the lettuce around like that. Whoops. If you need to, just pop it in half. And you've got a very delicious set of healthy burgers. Put the lid on. If they have trouble staying on, you can just um, put a spike through them. And there you go, beautifully presented on the table on that nice chopping board. That's everything nearly finished, we'd better get onto the smoothie, the carob ice. And this is one of my favouritest um, things to have as a dessert. First ingredient is frozen bananas. I always keep some frozen bananas in your fridge, the freezer, sorry. So those come out, if, they, if they're stuck together, just kind of separate them. So we've got about three bananas here. And we want some milk. And using any healthy milk, almond milk, soy milk, rice milk, oat milk. So I'm going to use some almond milk. And then we're going to use some carob powder. And this is a great chocolate alternative that you can use that doesn't have caffeine, doesn't have any sugar added, it's just a lovely chocolate. So you want probably about just under a tablespoon per person. So we're making about four serves here, three bananas, four tablespoons of carob powder, and about one cup of milk. 
So I'll blend it up and see how that goes. So you probably want to start on the underside of having the, of the quantity of milk and just keep adding it so it just turns in your blender. If you put too much in it goes runny, so see how that goes. Okay, I'll get some glasses. I'll pour that out. Get the lid off. That's just a really nice texture. Nice and thick and chocolatey without all the, the bad parts of chocolate. There we go, look at that. A nice chocolatey end. So there we go, we have a McHealthy meal combo. We have the delicious burgers, the sweet potato fries, and the carob ice. A delicious, healthy way to have fast food at home. And there you have a McHealthy meal combo in just 30 minutes. And this is gonna be much healthier than some of those fast food offerings you see out here. These fries are just Mmm, so sweet and delicious. I can't wait to try on these burgers. Look at that, you've got the butternut, the beautiful bean patty, avocado and that hummus. This is going to taste amazing. Thank you for joining me today on Cook 30. I hope you've learned some new skills, some new ingredients and you've got some ways to feed your family healthier food because when you do you'll feel and look fantastic. I look forward to seeing you next time on Cook 30.